Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming. I'm Angela Natividad. I'm one of the, uh, I'm a freelance strategist and one of the MIP live bloggers. So if you've been wondering who's been spamming your tweet wall, you've got a face for the name now. <laughs> so thank you for coming to this session on branded content. Um, just a quick introduction with the proliferation of so many screens and so much great content in competition for people's time. Advertisers are under a lot of pressure to find new ways to capture attention, obviously. You know this already. And this isn't just someone else's problem. Under pressure to produce higher quality content for smaller and smaller amounts of money, producers, networks, and other content distributors and creators increasingly rely on advertising to underwrite their creative. Branded content is now their go-to model, uniting both of their interests. The question is, how do you produce advertising that remains in harmony with your entertainment experience while serving the interests of a brand? I'm going to take my glasses off now because I'm nervous and they're getting foggy. It's with pleasure that I introduce you to our panel, which include uh, Thomas Jamé, the president of Moxie, a subsidiary of Publicis. You might have, you might have remembered their president from last night. Uh, Moxie's developed a model that aims to help advertisers and producers make rational choices in a programming partnership. It also enables both parties to build proximity with users. You'll also be hearing from Lionel Abou, creative director and biz dev guy at Shine, and Chantal petraki boyer head of communication at Banque Populaire, uh, who'll be able to tell us whether this model works. So take it over, Thomas. Thank you, Angela. So, hello. Um, so, my name is Thomas. I am um, the CEO of uh, Moxie. So, Moxie is a subsidiary of uh, Publicis Group and then it Optimedia. And um, I'd like to uh, thank uh, MipCube to, having, to have this session, which is very uh, interesting for us as a panel and for the industry in order to, you know, uh, have a kind of exchange with you. We hope at the end of the presentation about emotion and that's exactly what we are doing uh, at Moxie. Our job is to be the link between brands and entertainment, so TV programs but also music for instance or sport. So we are um, the key actor behind partnerships between Renault and David Guetta, Pampers and Baby Boom, Ralph Lauren and Metronomy, um, Orange and the Ting Tings, Saint de Benage and uh, Les Furets which is uh, just another name in, in, in the UK, um, and Banque Populaire at The Voice, and The Voice, uh, and we will talk about that right now. So our weapons to be the link between those brands, brands as a program and a brand uh, as an advertiser, um, is mainly social tools and social studies that we use, and I will, I will explain exactly how. Um, we use these tools as, a, as weapons to really understand what people, for instance, say on the internet, what are the conversations, what do people are explaining about programs, what do people, people are saying about brands, and we also have a specific methodology which is, which is called content audit, and this methodology helps us to understand what is exactly the content that can be strategic for brands to be associated with, or to programs um, to make partnerships really strategic. Because today, you know, this is something that is maybe too much um, leaded by opportunism, and uh, our ambition today is to present um, a test, a pilot program, a pilot study, in order to evaluate the best value exchange between brands and programs in a more strategic way, in a more objective way, and no more just only, you know, just because it seems to fit. So, Firstly, I would like to talk about emotion. So audiovisual programs always were about emotion. So you remember, of course, the Orson Welles uh, hack of the US radio with War of the Worlds, where he uh, provoked a panic in the US. Uh, and every, the, all the country believed that the UFOs and aliens just invaded the United States. It was radio, so of course. TV is more and more about emotion. I would just like you to watch this little video of a girl who, who is watching one of the key programs and the key uh, episodes of Game of Thrones. <laughs> what the fuck? Kill? Just go. Fuck go ape shit. Kill Bill right now. No! 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 
So it's all about emotion, you know, and programs are providing and, you know, guiding people in their emotions too. And today we all know, and this is one of the key aspects of this MIP TV and, of course, about, uh, of, of this MIP Cube edition. And I think this is the first year that Twitter is having, you know, something to say here. And this is very important because today emotions are becoming more and more social. This is all about the second screen. This is all about the interactions between people watching a program and having an interaction with this program. So emotions can be shared, emotions can be used, and this is very interesting for brands to jump in it and to propose something to the consumer, which is also an audience. So today, partnership strategies between brands and TV programs are too often driven by opportunism. You know, this is how oh, we have an opportunity, and this is something we can sell, or oh, let's propose this kind of program. What we want to do is to, um, you know, input this, uh, this reflection with emotion and to understand what is the emotion of the TV program and, you know, provoked by the brand, and how we can meet, match together, sorry, the, the emotion through a specific study that is a listening of the content and the conversations of people online to understand it and to see how we can really understood the way everything is working. So we did a test. Um, we studied 15 brands, five key programs, and on three countries, USA, France, and the UK. And this is only, you know, kind of a test study. This is something we can, um, we, we can go further with that. And it looks like that. Actually, we created a ratio, which is very simple to you know, understand what we can call the emotional engagement. So we mixed some key PI, some, some key performance indicators to create this new ratio. So we do an addition of conversations. So what are the positive or negative online conversations about a program or about a brand? So we have a, a kind of a rating you know, between 0 and 10 to evaluate the positive or the negative feedbacks about uh, the, uh, the program or the brand. Then we addition the search volume, so do the program is search on Google, do, the, pro do the, the brand is also very searched on Google, for instance, so we evaluate the search volume in order to evaluate the intensity of the search and if this is something that is needed and searched by people. And then we also, of course, um, add the engagement through social data analysis. So this is actually the shared, the like, the retweets, and everything you can imagine on Facebook and Twitter, for instance. And with this ratio, we can map a kind of uh, a strategic grid in order to see if the emotional engagement is low or high. In instance, for instance, we can say that this is a high emotional engagement. So the program of the, or the brand is very much linked to an engagement that is very important for the consumer or the audience. And on the opposite, we can uh, see if this is a big community. So if the tweets, the likes, the, su the subscribers on YouTube, for instance, um, is high or not high. And with this um, methodology, which is very empiric and simple, by the way, we can just you know, um, make fit on a simple slide some programs and some um, brands in order to see that, for instance, Burger King has a much more higher emotional engagement that, than Domino's Pizza because uh, obviously the tweets, the comments, um, everything that is said around the brand is much more emotional than another brand. Um, we can also see that the engagement rate, the likes, the tweets, the clicks, and uh, everything that can be around sharing and earned media is much more important on Burger King than Domino's Pizza, and the search volume is quite equivalent. But we can you know, say that Burger King has a much more emotional engagement, but Domino's Pizza, maybe for another strategy they developed, have a higher community. And uh, if you um, do an addition of the subscribers on YouTube, Facebook um, fans, and the, fo the followers on Twitter, Domino's Pizza is more powerful, but less engaging. It is the same for a program. Actually, the voice, maybe because it's uh, um, 
more recent, um, as a smaller community than another program called Britain Got Talent in the UK, for instance. But at the same time, The Voice have a much more higher emotional engagement ratio than um, Britain's Got Talent. So people are much more engaged, people are much more keen to search, people are much more keen to do positive or negative things about this program than another program. So by the way, this is very simple, but with this we can add another stuff, which is a kind of a strategy guidelines to see if between a brand and a program that are compatible on our grid, we can see and you know make them match with the DNA, with the innovation provide, providing elements that a TV can bring to a brand and the opposite, and shared value. And this is exactly what we did for a program which is called Baby Boom and with our, one of our clients, which is called Pampers uh, from PNG. And um, we evaluated you know, the way that between this program and this brand, things can match together and things can be you know, a win-win situation and a real value exchange between the two actors and the two brands, by the way. So we evaluated that between Baby Boom and Pampers, this, this is, of course, a, a big DNA match because this is all about babies and maternity. So it can seem obvious, you know, but, you know, um, what it is in, interesting is that Pampers and Baby Boom created together something we designed with them, which is the first branded content sequel. So basically, we used the babies that were inside the program to create a specific branded content program after uh, the, uh, the, um, the program that you can see on the internet and on digital and you can see what happened to the baby six months after the program and this is something that really wa uh, was create creator of shared value because Pampers helped the program to be alive in a way because uh, we began the discussion between Pampers and Baby Boom very early in the process of the production um, with uh, our friends at Shine and uh, if we hadn't these discussions a long time before and having a kind of a strategic approach of this partnership, Baby Boom certainly were not on French TV, for instance. And at the same time, Baby Boom helped Pampers to create a real brand preference and a big business opportunity for this brand. So actually, you can see that by you know, putting these two brands on this grid and make them match together, we can much more easily create a kind of a strategic partnership and not only a partnership uh, driven by opportunism. This is exactly what we did with the uh, Banque Populaire and uh, The Voice. And now we'll let Lionel Abo explain you exactly what we did uh, with an innovation, which is called The Fifth Coach. Thank you, Thomas. That's really impressive. Um, uh, before talking about uh, the voice, I'd like to talk about uh, Shine. Uh, creating emotions is definitely in our DNA. That's our baseline, to be honest with you. Um, and the voice, the voice is all about emotion. That's exactly what it is uh, about. It's about closing his eyes, listening to music, and feel the emotion. Let's have a look at the video and you see what I mean.
Ma vieni! Io mi ero detto che il primo che si fosse girato sarei andato da lui, quindi ho andato a And at the end she chose the bad guy. The reason why The Voice is such a success all around the world is, is precisely because whoever you are, you'll be touched by this woman singing Alicia Keys. And The, voice, the Voice's contestants can be fat, small, ugly, it doesn't matter as long as, long as they're talented. And this is the talent who generates and who creates uh, emotion. After the, uh, after the first series, uh, we've seen that, uh, we've noticed that the viewers wanted and used to do this. Turn their chair over so far and uh, trying to replace the coach, to feel their emotion, to see what it, uh, what it means, to uh, just close his eyes and only listening a voice. Um, so that's one of the reasons why we have uh, thought about uh, the fifth coach. Uh, we wanted uh, the, the viewers to be, to be able to, to feel this, the, the coach's emotion. How the, the, does the, the fifth coach work? It allows you, uh, as a viewer, to push the button as if you were a coach when you appreciate the performance, and then to select your own team. What you, what you need to have in, uh, in mind is that uh, it was two years ago and uh, it was the early days of the second screen. Uh, the second screen at this stage uh, was felt uh, by the channels as a danger because it was disturbing the viewers. Um, we were thinking that uh, it was a pro they were thinking that uh, it was a problem that uh, while they were watching the TV, they were also checking their emails, playing Candy Crush and all that stuff. So the way we thought about uh, this app, The Fifth Coach, is, uh, was to make the viewers more focused on TV, creating uh, a stronger connection uh, with uh, what happened on TV, and at the end, increasing the level of their emotion. Now we're very happy to see that uh, in France and all over the world, The Voice and The Fifth Coach has become a reference in terms of uh, social TV and user en engagement. And we think that probably, but uh, uh, you, you'll give us an answer, but uh, uh, probably it was uh, the reason why Banque Popular has been interested in, uh, in this application. So actually, just to explain the way we uh, make the voice and the fifth coach fit with uh, Banque Popular and the opposite, this is all about the DNA and the fact that talents are at the core of the voice program, of course, and also at the core of Banque Populaire Promise, and Chantal will explain you that. We um, identified the innovation uh, provider, which is the fifth coach, and the shared value, because Banque Populaire is um, you know, having a good value exchange with the voice, because the voice is giving to Banque Populaire a lot of exposure and a lot, creating a lot of brand preference, and at the same time, by being a partner of The Voice and The Fifth Coach, Banque Populaire helps also The Voice and the program to have a huge earned media and a huge conversations driver on the internet and on digital. So it's really about a win-win situation between two brands, and this is something which is more and more strategic. And now Chantal will explain you what are the results and of course what is the exact strategy of uh, this advertiser. Thank you. Um, when we decided to be uh, the partner of The Voice, we had a problem with our strat um, advertising strategy, and we knew that we couldn't have a, spot, a TV spot on the TV until uh, December. So uh, we wanted to, um, uh, we had three aims. Uh, first one aim was brand awareness, the second one was the, our reputation, and the third one was engagement. Brand awareness because we wanted to be uh, linked with a program which was uh, with a, a very powerful audience, and so we, choose, uh, we chose um, uh, the voice because of it was um, 18 weeks on TV and it was just on our target. 
And uh, we wanted to be the, there was only one partner for the fifth coach, so it was important for us to be exclusive partner. Uh, it was important for us, uh, for the brand reputation, because we wanted people to understand that it was a natural partnership, because uh, we shared the same values. Um, the Bank Populaire was created for, from people who had talent, and uh, the bank was here to help them to realize their project, their dreams, and their. And so we are, uh, we are like coaches with talents. And the second thing, uh, the third thing is what we want people to be involved. And um, th three, two things were important for us. Uh, the Voice is a program which with, uh, there are many tweets around. And the first, the first program with uh, so many tweets around. And then the fifth coach uh, was a, a, a possibility for us to make people be more and more involved. So, uh, we want what we what uh, did we do and what are we doing at this uh, at this time? We wanted first to show how natural it is for Bank Popular to be a partner of this program. Um, so we uh, had many advertisers per propositions on my T, uh, TF1, and we chose to be only uh, on pre roll on the voice videos. Um, then we have a, a Facebook page and we post. Um, only message about talents and skills and, and how it is important for us to work to get talent become success and uh, and uh, we even use a quote very uh, from f very famous people this one uh, is uh, from Walt Disney all our dreams can come true if you have the courage to pursue them and when we post this type of message many people liked and say yes I'm, I agree uh, we met people uh, engage on play making uh, games on Facebook, uh, which is uh, the world you saw uh, first, and you can see you can see talents in uh, in the cross there. Um, we um, we publish tweets to encourage people to go and play on the fifth coach. Um, Look uh, on the right, Jack Talon. Uh, every talent is important. Become the fifth coach and play on, uh, life play on uh, uh, the fifth coach. And we maximize the audience. Uh, um, we used um, the um, Twitter Amplify. TFI is a special uh, partnership with uh, Twitter. And so we created a special hashtag. Uh, Talent Bank Pop, uh, used by TNF, uh, TF1 uh, also, and we had three sponsorized tweets each Saturday during the first, the ten first primes, and I've uh, heard from TF1 that it was the first and it was the best score they ever had uh, about this uh, dispositive tweet amplify. So you can see the main results uh, um, about uh, our digital uh, dispositive. And then you will see the second one. It's all about uh, the fifth coach. So uh, more than 47 million impressions delivered, uh, an excellent CTR, uh, almost 4,000 retreats, and a very, very good engagement rate. And uh, on the fifth uh, coach, you can see we had uh, almost uh, 23 million impressions and contact, and more than 80% uh, of internet uh, users who clicked on uh, our ad uh, played the game. So we were very useful to the fifth case to make people be involved and engaged. So it was better than the homepage takeover in terms of CTR. Okay, we don't have a ton of time for Q&A, but if you guys have any questions for them, you can meet the speakers just outside the room directly after this session. Uh, I just want to get a couple out here. Uh, so, in general, what is the first thing, I think this is for Lionel, actually. What is the first thing a producer should do when he has something he thinks is worth sponsoring? How does he approach an agency and who does he talk to? Uh, thank you. Um, the first thing we do is thinking of a format not as only TV show, but has 
um, uh, brands, uh, which means that we we think about them. Um, we think about the fact that uh, they, they should live on uh, online, they should live on the app, we should live uh, with uh, with strong brands. So we try to um, uh, dominate which are the values, their core values, and this is with these values that uh, we approach uh, the brands and uh, the, um, uh, the TV advertisers, uh, advertisers department. Thomas, this one's for you. Uh, a recent Nielsen study was, uh, was released last week that found uh, branded content only lifts uh, purchasing consideration, familiarity, and affinity by 8%, whereas expert content, expert reviews, are 36 to 88% more effective in each of those three categories. What would you say to that? I think you know branded content is not new because uh, it exists be, you know, since the uh, early ages of advertising. You know, If you remember, uh, that the first branded content was created by uh, John Deere in uh, 1895 <laughs> by creating a magazine to provide content to people that were buying their products. Actually, this is not new, but this is, you know, maybe the best, even this number uh, is, uh, is a study, but you can really see and say that adding the good content to the good program or the good brand, brand and make them match is something which is quite unique and we saw that the numbers and the results of this operation between Banque Populaire and The Voice were so high and higher than we expected as an agency and of course as Banque Populaire and Shine expected too. So maybe this number is something which is you know global and of course we can s say that um, you know when we talk about branded content uh, Everything is not good, of course, because it's, it's, it's a job to provide content and to create content. And when we create program, um, program uh, content sorry, around programs like the, the Fifth Coach with Shine, this is good content. You know? And I think we have more and more as agencies to learn from the program providers and from production houses like Shine and maybe to work with them in order to make the good connections. And I think this is maybe the, mo the most important. So if, if you don't have the good connection, so if you don't have the good strategy, of course, it, will, it won't work. Thanks. Do you plan to work with Shine, Moxie, and The Voice again? <laughs> yes, surely. Um, I want like, just to add something. Uh, I think that it's very important for us. We work for a very long, long time with uh, Moxie and Zenit, and they know our brand very well. They know the, our history, they know our d DNA, and so they don't propose this program. Um, it was not um, it was strategic, and so um, it matched very well because they knew they knew us very well. Thanks a lot, guys. We're out of time. Thank you.